Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we have a 13 Dodge Journey. The shop has replaced the PCM with a new one from the dealer. We're going to program it. Stand by. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. This is Sam. I'm a mobile diagnostics guy and a mobile programmer covering the Detroit area. Any of the equipment you see used in our videos is available on our website. If it's not on our website, just send us an inquiry off the website and we'll let you know if we carry it, where to get it if we don't, etc. etc. Okay, so today we have a 13 Dodge Journey. The shop has replaced the uh, engine control module from the dealer so you might think well this is pretty straightforward but it is kind of except for as a mobile guy these are the ones that make you lose your lunch this is uh, I'm gonna leave most of the problems in here we're gonna speed through some of them but this is a vehicle that is plagued or a programming event that is plagued with problems and I just want to show you how we recover from it. Stand by. Okay. First thing first, let's get the Y-Tech pulled up here. Get logged into Chrysler. I'm using a legitimate Y-Tech 2 with a legitimate subscription, by the way. in the aftermarket so there's a few extra steps that the guys at the dealer don't take so I should have known right from the get-go here this was gonna be a problem this vehicle because this thing takes a long time to connect it never takes this long to connect but sometimes you ignore the warnings like I say this a new PCM from the dealer they're not cheap. And I hate the thought of ruining one. Been pretty fortunate so far. All the years I've been programming cars. I can count on one hand the number of computers that I've had to replace at my expense. So And there's been a couple of them that it was just absolutely my fault. Just pure stupidity. But let's get the VIN typed in here. We finally got it logged in here. we we'll finally get the right VIN in here. It does come up as a 13 journey. And then this TSB pops up here. It says prior to diagnosing, repairing, updating, or replacing the PCM or related components. Let's look at this TSB. Failure, failure to do so can result in rendering the PCM inoperable after flashing. That's a pretty scary sounding bulletin. So let's go look. Let's just Google it real, real quick and see what it is. I wish they just had the, the link to the TSB right here. It'd be it'd be better but we're just gonna Google it Google knows right just search Google for it the second one down Dodge TSB 18058-19 revision B so we're gonna click on that one I don't know the website here carcomplaints.com never been there uh, I've, maybe I've been there I don't know I don't know who it is though. Like I say, it was just Google search. Let's just open up this this PDF here. And we're just gonna kinda glance through it here. 
So what it looks like is that there's a possibility that the sometimes the engines get replaced with the wrong engine for some reason. And if you put the wrong software in the PCM, you can make the car not start. So it doesn't sound to me like it really makes the PCM inoperable. It just doesn't make the car start, from what I can tell. Anyway, that's all the glance that I was going to do with that bulletin. They're not putting an engine in it. I don't really know what they're fixing. I assume it's they're fixing some transmission codes. It is a transmission shop, so. But, again, that's an assumption on my part. I didn't really ask. So let's get this PCM updated. I'm not real sure why they want this information. I'm sure it's for warranty purposes and aftermarket. I almost never type anything in here. I just hit the keyboard with a couple letters. But you can do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I do. And of course now we got to wait for Chrysler to send us a token. They're almost making this unbearable to do properly. They're almost encouraging us to go a different route. I don't encourage doing stuff not legitimately, but sometimes it becomes apparent that that's what they want you to do. And that's the case here to me. So, and notice this is login required and that page won't go away. wonder what's going on here. So downloading the flash file from the internet, usually this is the first thing that happens. But we can tell it's having trouble getting back to the server. Or from, that's my analogy anyway. Like I said, I wanted to leave this in here. So my VCI is lost connection. Do not, under any circumstances, turn the ignition off on this. This is a push button start. And if anybody who's worked on one of these push button starts before, they know that they will turn off in time without you telling it to. So let's hope it doesn't happen here. We want the ignition to stay on. It's trying to log in again. I'm trying to be patient. Uh-oh. Now my Quitex lost connection to the cloud. Oh, no. Now I don't have any internet. Holy mackerel. This will make you lose your lunch in a hurry, won't it? It was only partway through. It wasn't even really finished downloading, but we can't see what's happening in the background, so we don't know what's happened. So, I'm on a mobile hotspot. I reboot my phone. Like I said, I left all this in here because I wanted you to see sometimes you just got to be able to think and I'm gonna be honest with you if you called tech support right now it might be tomorrow till they get hold of you they don't care that you're in the middle of a programming sequence that's failing oh I got internet back let's get back on here Connection's been interrupted again. Oh, what are we going to do? It's a brand new computer. Let's get connected back up here. Try again. Like I said, I did reboot my phone because it's a mobile, mobile hotspot. So, but I program with it all the time. Doesn't make it right. I use it all the time, so go back in here. So now my micropod's got a red light on it. I unplug the pod so I can restart it because if it's got a red light, it will not connect to the server. Very frustrating, I know. Gotta wait for the pod.
tried to reconnect to the to the server too. Kind of a neat system when it works right, but when it doesn't, the worst part is you got nobody you can really call to ask, you know, what do you do now? So I wanted to post this video of how I handle these situations. I usually don't freak out. My heart rate goes up, but sometimes it, it I mean, it's part of the life of being a, a mobile guy, part of a life of a guy doing programming you're gonna have problems so you can't uh, dwell on the problems and I did leave this actual speed so this is how long it takes for my micropod to reboot and get hooked up to the to the internet here shouldn't have taken that long but <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, here we're back up again. Let's get this VIN type back in here. See if we can get this thing done. Remember, we only saw it downloading from the internet. go 2013 journey again we don't need to look at the TSB again we've already looked at it so uh oh PCM doesn't have a lightning bolt and it shows that it's got the right calibration in it but I didn't see it happen I'm sure you didn't see it happen so I'm just gonna go ahead and program it again I know Suicide, right? Let's get this thing going. Remember, right? This is where we were last time, so we never got to this page. So starting flash, downloading logical block, all that good stuff. We never saw any of this before. So I'm just going to feel better knowing that it's been done. Once the key off, it's a good sign. It says that everything looks like it's working now so maybe it did program it I don't know like I said it's one of those things you didn't see what happened so but now we gotta go make it work because now the car is a no crank so there's some things we need to do here and like I say it is a push button start and it does not have a win module so we can't go in like the previous ones and do the PCM replaced function so there's a few things we need to do here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the odometer, the mileage in it. And it's no, it's not between zero and 58 miles. And notice, remember that bulletin also applied to the four cylinder. This is a V6. So we know for sure that it doesn't relate to this vehicle. It says it programmed the odometer successfully. I'm going to get on here to where it says learn ETC or the electronic throttle pedal. If you saw the codes as we kind of glanced through them there, you saw that the it had APP codes. So it tells you that this electronic throttle control needs to be learned. I want the pedal on the floor and then I want you to release it and just hit continue a couple of times. And it says the electronic throttle control is complete. Throttle control learned passed. is kind of a weird year because it does have an RFH or uh, radio frequency hub 
And some of them will have PCM replaced, some of them won't. Now, this one doesn't look like it does, in my experience. And when it doesn't, the only thing you have to do is go back to the PCM and do the check PCM VIN. It says VIN's not valid. Oh, how about that? You gotta type it in. I don't know why it doesn't pull it from the top. That's a good question. I could probably copy it and paste it. And to me, it's just just type it. Be done with it. Now it says my VIN's valid. I always check the VIN number in the details section. Just, I don't know, just to, that's something I do. Notice the PCM is blue now, which means it doesn't have any code. So we do have an original VIN missing or mismatch and then BCM uh, VIN mismatch. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the key on and off a couple of times and sometimes uh, that code will go away after you cycle the key a couple of times. I know it did a power down after the PCM was programmed, but it has not done a power down since I put the VIN in it. So I do that a couple of times just to make sure this code goes away because it does have a flashing red light on the, the dash as well. So that tells everybody there's a some kind of theft problem. No, we don't want that. And the car does start and run now. So it's always a good sign and the throttle works. It does end up having some transmission codes normally at this point I would do a quick learn on the trans but it does have some transmission codes that have reappeared. So all of my codes should be stored at this point but I'm not going to be able to do the quick learn because of the codes. So I'm just going to clear all the codes here. And then we're considered done. So hopefully I answered some questions. What you need to do. No, I'm not updating the rest of these modules. So have a great day. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay. So that concludes our 2013 journey, new PCM from the dealer, programming with having network problems. I don't have a lot of network problems with Chrysler's, but when I do, this is how I handle them. So I just thought I'd cover it with you, show you it's not the end of the world. Have a great day.